This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Hello and welcome to Talking Heads. As America launches wave after wave of attacks against Afghanistan, the question many in India, in fact all over the world, are asking is where are the voices of dissent within America? Well, at a time like this, we're fortunate enough to be joined in India by Professor Noam Chomsky, who some describe as one of the fiercest critics of American foreign policy. Professor Chomsky teaches linguistics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Boston. But it's really his writing and his lectures on international affairs, U.S. foreign policy, and his constant expose of media manipulation that has won him a huge worldwide following. Professor Chomsky, thank you so much for joining us on Talking Heads. Let's begin with basics. America says that at the moment it's fighting a war against terrorism. I take it you have problems with all the terms of that definition. Well, uh, I'm quite happy to accept the definition of terrorism, that uh, the official definition that one finds in the U.S. Code and in Army manuals. In fact, for 20 years I've been writing about international terrorism and I constantly use that definition. I think it's the right definition. Uh, the terrorism is defined officially as the, uh, let's paraphrase, as the calculated use of violence typically against civilians uh, for the purpose of uh, intimidation and coercion uh, to attain political, religious, uh, ideological or other ends. That's terrorism. Uh, by that, and that, that's a good definition. I agree with it. There are terrorist states. There are terrorist. There are non-state terrorist actors. And in fact, the State Department has a list of terrorist states. Well, if we apply that definition, uh, that def definition can't really be applied, uh, and therefore it's not used. Uh, so there's uh, uh, that's the literal definition. The reason it can't be applied is two reasons. Uh, one is it's a virtual paraphrase of uh, official U.S. doctrine, uh, which is called uh, counterinsurgency or low-intensity conflict. Mm -hmm. If you look at the same army manuals, you find that's defined in approximately the same way. But that's official policy. Now, the second reason why it can't be applied is that if you do apply it, it very quickly turns out that uh, the United States is a leading terrorist state, exactly as you'd expect of the most powerful state in the world. I mean, it's a great analytic error to describe terrorism as a weapon of the weak. Now, like most weapons, it's primarily a weapon of the strong, and always has been. Elaborate uh, on that for us, Professor Chomsky, because that's also been the subject of one of your recent books, Rogue States, in which you forcefully argue that, in fact, America really emerges uh, looking at the history of its foreign policy interventions as a rogue state in contradiction to the other countries that America has uh, classified as rogue, whether it's Iran or Afghanistan? Well, I don't really think it's in contrast. In fact, I think it's generally the case that the most powerful states are uh, um, the most brutal uh, and the ones that uh, are able to act as rogue states. A rogue state is, after all, a state that uh, acts as it chooses in defiance of international law and uh, international opinion and other constraints. And who's able to do that? Well, the most powerful states. So if you go back to the 19th century, uh, Britain was one of the major rogue states. In the latter part of the 20th century, the United States is supreme in these respects, and not surprisingly, it uh, behaves like others. I mean, uh, Andorra would be a rogue state if it could get away with it, but it can't. You know, uh, And th the record is extremely clear on that. I mean, we can just take, one, take, a, take a case that's totally uncontroversial, uh, because uh, we have the we can appeal to the uh, uh, decisions of the highest international authorities, the International Court of Justice and the Security Council of the United Nations. So this is an uncontroversial case. Uh, it has, uh, the World Court uh, has condemned one state for international terrorism, namely the United States. Uh, the victim, Nicaragua, this was not a minor act of terrorism. It left uh, tens of thousands of people killed and country virtually destroyed, may not recover. Uh, Nicaragua took the case to the World Court. They won at the World Court. Uh, the United States dismissed the uh, decision with total contempt immediately. The, the U U.S. was ordered to desist from the terrorism and to pay reparations. It, reacted by immediately escalating the war. But some would argue that uh, no country, least of all a superpower like America, would 
take an attack like the ones of September 11th lying down without any retaliation. So where do you think hmm. America has gone wrong in the manner in which it's retaliated? Well, it, there are many, I mean, you, you could say the same about Nicaragua. Incidentally, Nicaragua is by no means the worst case, mm -hmm. uh, far from it. I mention it because it's an uncontroversial case, uh, given the decisions of the highest authorities. So uh, how should Nicaragua have reacted when uh, it was under terrorist attack that uh, practically destroyed the country and killed tens of thousands of people? Well, you know, it, the way it did react is the way it's supposed to react. Uh, it couldn't get anywhere because it was confronting a, a rogue state, mm -hmm. which happens to be a dominant rogue state. If the U.S. pursued that course, nobody would block it. Uh, there would be, in fact, in this particular case, it's kind of striking because the U.S. could have gotten a Security Council resolution, uh, not for very pretty reasons, but it could have. Now, the reason is that the f five states with veto power are all terrorist states, uh, strong, powerful, and violent terrorist states. And for their own reasons, they would have supported uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, main in order to gain U.S. support for their own terrorism. I mean, Britain follows the U.S. reflexively. Uh, France wouldn't raise any objections, and they have a terrible record themselves. Uh, Russia is delighted to have U.S. support for its massacres and atrocities in Chechnya. Uh, China would be quite happy, in fact, is happy, to have U.S. support for its uh, violent repression of uh, Muslims in the western part of China. There wouldn't have been any veto. Right. But the U.S. didn't want a Security Council resolution because it wanted to act like a rogue state. It wanted to act without authorization. Um, so there was a, there was, there's a way to proceed. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't have approved of that Security Council resolution mm -hmm. because of the reasons for which it would have been passed, but, but that would they, have been possible. But would there have been another way, which is perhaps not the, not the airstrikes, not the Security sure. Council resolu uh, resolution, which, as you say, uh, comes replete with its own hypocrisies? Is there is another there no, alternative yes, that the U.S. could have pursued? Yes, uh, you do so what you do when... Uh, uh, when a crime takes place, and no matter whether it's a small crime or a huge crime, mm -hmm. like if it's a robbery in the streets or an attack on another country, a terrorist attack like Nicaragua, uh, you try to find the perpetrators, uh, you find, present evidence against them, and you try to bring them to justice. Actually, that's what Nicaragua did. It had no difficulty finding the perpetrators and finding evidence. Uh, couldn't bring them to justice. Uh, the U.S. could do the same thing. Uh, it chose to do something different, namely not to attack the perpetrators. Uh, the, pe the people who are being killed in Afghanistan are not terrorists. Uh, that's the population of Afghanistan. Uh, there's a lot of concentration on what they call collateral damage, the people who get killed if a bomb goes in the wrong place. All right, that's bad, but the reason there's concentration on it is because it's very small. Mm -hmm. It's a trivial part of the uh, atrocities. The main atrocities, which are well understood and have been known from the beginning, are uh, imposing a conscious and uh, purposeful imposition of mass starvation on the huge numbers of people. It may be millions of people. Now, that was the initial decision instantly. These people are going to die of starvation and already are. Are not Taliban. They're not supporters of the Taliban. The Muslims are victims of the Taliban.